Hi, I'm Dustin Mason from Performance Lexus in St. Catharines. And today, we're going to compare the new IS500 with the classic ISF. And answer the question, is the IS500 just the new version of the ISF? But before I get into that video, make sure you hit like and subscribe for more Lexus related content. And also a big thank you to Bilal for giving us his custom ISF for this video. So obviously the ISF has a lot of customization to it, but we can still do some comparisons on that front end. On the IS 500, you'll notice it does have a little bit more of a big presence for that front end. We have the massive spindle grille trimmed off by sort of some blacked out, it's not even blacked out chrome, it's kind of like a, like a piano black trim around it with some air intakes at the bottom of that grille, a little bit of a plastic top to the bumper and then this massive hood that has this really big bulge and vision lines that sort of all protrude down to that front nose. It's very different from the IS 350 and 300 and that hood is really what shows you that on the front end. We do have the new daytime running lights above the triple beam LED headlight with a little headlight washer there and a little bit more of that F-Sport grille down to the side. Now over to the ISF. So right away, even though this ISF is lowered, you can still see that it is a lot smaller. In fact, even that front bumper, which is extended because of the carbon fiber, even the front bumper is a lot smaller than the previous one. Now this one does have some custom, really nice headlights with the new Lexus LED strip on top of the triple beam LED headlight, little small spindle grill here with a Lexus emblem with some venting behind it. And at the bottom of the bumper, we have a little bit more of that continuation of aero and spindle grill, and then a huge intake vent here for cooling the brakes and the tires, just like on the IS500. Nice little LED fog light here, surrounded by some carbon fiber, and then obviously this gorgeous Novus carbon fiber lip at the bottom. But when you look at the hood, this actually blew my mind when I compared the two of them because it's a lot smaller than the IS500. The IS500 looks like there's a V8 under there. It's got like this cowl look to it, like a classic muscle car cowl. And the ISF, I'm looking at it being like, where did they put that engine? Because it looks like it wouldn't even fit under here, which is really cool. By the way, you might notice this one does have a custom paint job and has a little nice blue shine behind that white paint. So looking at the ISF brake and wheel setup. So this one has a huge brake kit on it with crossed slotted and, and drilled rotors. It has a massive orange, painted orange like the GSF. F caliper on there. It's like a big brake kit on this one. And the IS500 also seems to have a big brake kit, but it doesn't seem as aggressive, especially when you're driving. It's not as grabby as like the ISF was. It's definitely not tuned to that level. Also on the IS500, we have the new F-Sport badge. It's not a true F badge, where on the ISF, that is what we saw there. Now this one has a custom titanium brushed metal badge, which is a little bit different and I like that. Underneath the badge, you'll notice one of the more telltale signs of an F, and that's the venting here on that little quarter panel that kind of goes into that bottom side skirt. And on the IS500, we don't have that. When it comes to the side, silhouettes of both of these cars, you can really see how much bigger the IS500 got versus this 2008 IS platform. So again, it does seem small. This is a lowered vehicle. We don't have a ton of aggressive lines on the side of the ISF. The body's a little more rounded, but we still have a little bit. It's like we have this little edge here that goes into that quarter panel with a little bit of a curve there. The biggest difference though is the ISF seems like it has a wide body kit versus the regular IS 300 and 350 from these years. And I guess maybe 250 from these years. It just looks wide. It's got this really big stance to it where the back looks a little bit wider. The fenders look flared out. It's got this aggressive stance. The IS 500 doesn't necessarily do that, but everything's a little bit bigger on the IS 500 versus the ISF. We have a similar body line, believe it or not, on the top of this door panel and an even more similar shape in this rear quarter. Actually, it's almost the same angles as the ISF, but just a whole lot bigger. Also, the car seems a little bit taller. It seems a little bit wider. We have some extra trims like 
everything's blacked out around the windows, the black mirror caps, the door handles, all that stuff. Actually, it's so funny because this rear door actually has this big curvature that makes it look like it's gonna get aggressive into a wide body kit, but then it doesn't. So I'm not too, too sure if Lexus was maybe saving that for a future model, I'm not too sure, but nonetheless, it's there. So the back of the IS500 is where we have a little bit more of that F personality. And what I mean by that is these exhausts. So the classic ISF exhaust is the quads that are sort of on an angle like that. Lexus did a great job of incorporating that into this piano black with a little bit of a diffuser sort of rear end here. And it sounds absolutely amazing. Above that, we have the new taillight on all the ISs where it's like an L shape and then it goes across to the other side. We have an IS500 badge, Lexus badge in the middle, and then this piano black spoiler that really accents that diffuser as well. Now over to the ISF. So again, this one is a little bit custom. So we are seeing a similar style of taillight where it has an L and then underlines to the other side. And we have some custom exhausts that are still that ISF sort of angle here. It's just they come out a little bit more and they still have some nice body lines with this custom diffuser, carbon fiber diffuser. It sort of looks like that new IS500 just exaggerated a little bit, which is kind of cool. We have the Lexus badges and the ISF badge, all with that nice brushed titanium with like the little bit of blue because of it. So I really do like that. And then above that, we have this spoiler that it's made by Wald. It's got a little bit of a lip to it, but it's cool because when you look at it from right at the back, it looks very factory, which I like until you get up close and then you can see that, oh no, that actually is a spoiler. It's not the shape of the trunk. And I think that that really tied together this back end. And to say against the ISF and the IS500, both have awesome looking rear ends, especially because of that exhaust, which is so important on a car that's supposed to be fast because that's where everybody's gonna see it. So sitting in the ISF, we don't have a lot going on here. This is a 2008 platform. So this is years before things like Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, big touch screens, et cetera. But we do have a very usable, Lexus screen, it is touchscreen, and there is solid buttons on the side for shortcuts. The climate control and everything is all right there that you can actually press the physical button. There's a volume knob, a tuner knob, all of those things that we do love. Now, Bilal did put a custom steering wheel in here with some really nice custom carbon fiber to tie in the light interior with the white leather and all the other carbon fiber. And it's interesting to note, in 2008, these paddle shifters was the quickest shifting transmission in the paddle mode that you could get in the market at the time because when the paddle shifter started to come out, it was almost like you were just forcing the car into gear. You were just, you were just telling you know, this one down here that you were wanting to shift and it would do it after it understood. But with the ISF, it was really quick and hard. You would hit that shift and the car would shift. It was almost like a race car. It was like the closest thing to a race car at the time. Because of that, it really increased that driving experience, which this whole cabin just states, this is a driver's car. There's not a ton of luxuries and amenities. You had things like heated seats. It wasn't an LS, if you know what I mean. But the real best thing about this interior is actually just this. because the engine is actually why we're here. So sitting in the IS500, we do have a lot more amenities and technologies and all these other things because we're in the model year 2024 now, which is a big fast forward from the 2008 ISF. However, as I'm sitting here, I'm realizing that it still has the same personality as the ISF. And what I mean by that is the dash is pretty plain and easy and laid out very nicely. Yes, we have the new screen and it's closer to you. And actually in the IS500, it's still sort of the last generation's multimedia system, which a lot of people actually really like because it's just simple and easy to use. You can touch here, you can use it as a touch screen or use the Lexus remote interface, little mouse in the center. It's quick, it's easy, it does what you need to do. It has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Our climate controls are still all physical buttons with the little slidey the slidey thing that I like for actually changing the climate. We have a volume knob and a tuner knob still. We have some heated and cooled seats that are all still buttons. And I know it sounds silly to say that, but so many new cars, it's all through the screen. Like all of these buttons have disappeared into the screen on a lot of newer Lexuses. So there is definitely still people out there that would rather a physical knob for, you know, changing the drive modes into Sport and Sport Plus, which the IS500 does have, by the way, you can tune the suspension for that. The gauge cluster is a big difference as well, where we have that LFA 
digital gauge, you can move it over, you can customize what you see there. Again, for the IS500, the real reason we're here is... That engine, which by the way, does sound a little different from the ISF, and Lexus actually has it being piped into the cabin with a little button on my left that says ASC, active sound control, where it's taking that engine noise and piping it into the cabin. Now with that, yes, you can hear a little more of the tone and the downshifts and stuff like that. But even if you shut it off, you can still hear that intake. You can still hear that engine roar to life. Not as raspy as the ISF. I think that was a little bit more raw exhaust, but still it's a V8 under the hood of this and you can still experience that. So the back of the IS500 is nothing to write home about and that's okay. It does have enough space for myself and I'm about six foot one. My head's definitely touching the headliner if I'm sitting up straight but if I'm gonna be active in a conversation in the front I'm gonna lean a little bit and I'll be fine it has a little armrest it has some vents back here and don't forget the IS is supposed to be sort of a coupe with four doors and that's kind of what it feels like back here is I can fit back here if I have to but it's a driver's car the person buying it's gonna be up front so the question lies is the IS 500 the new ISF and the answer is simple it's not but it's close and I think the reason Lexus didn't use the ISF badge on the 500 is perhaps there is a new ISF coming down the pipeline. That's the rumor anyways. We have a similar power plant where it's both five liter V8s with a sporty transmission in a rear wheel drive platform. The ISF is a little bit more rowdy. We got that loud body kit, really big aggressive brakes. You could do donuts in the parking lot. There's not gonna be all of these electronics trying to stop you. And the IS500 has all the new amenities and a little bit more of that subtle styling. It's not quite as wide or aggressive. You could drive this car every day to work and not wake up your neighbors and not have the whole world watching you. Are you gonna do donuts in the parking lot? Maybe, probably not, but perhaps. And I do think Lexus calling it the F Sport Performance is just a little hint at probably a new F model to come out in the IS platform. Maybe they were just testing the waters. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the IS500 and the ISF. If you like this video, also let me know if there's any other comparisons you would like to see, maybe some new versus old. And again, I'm Dustin Mason at Performance Lexus in St. Catharines. Big shout out to Bilal for lending us his custom ISF, and I'll see you in the next video.